The community of Uvalde, Texas came together today for the first funerals from last week's school shooting. People gathered to pay respects while struggling to grasp how this horrific attack unfolded. And tonight, we're getting a closer look at the unseen mark this shooting's left on the survivors. 11-year-old Mia Cerillo was in the classroom as her 19 classmates and two teachers were murdered. One of her friends killed right next to her as she pretended to play dead. Tonight, her parents are saying she is haunted by what happened. She's scared for her life. She, anything sets her off. The cats, the dogs will bark and she'll think, oh, he's here. And it is the same story for so many other survivors of mass shootings, from Parkland to Sandy Hook, Columbine, and countless other attacks. These survivors are struggling to deal with all the trauma. Tonight, Emily Longnecker shares the story of one woman who's still working decades later to come to terms with what she witnessed. The images and stories from last Tuesday's mass shooting, an all too familiar scene for one woman who I spoke with Tuesday. That's because she survived the mass shooting at Columbine High School 23 years ago. If you would have asked me a week ago if I'd have done these interviews again, I would have said no, never again in my life. They're too traumatic. These teenagers coming out of Columbine High School. For the past 15 the years, Marjorie Erickson has stayed silent about the day that changed her life forever. To be honest, it's taken two decades to deal with it. Two decades were living the trauma and trying to forget the day two students at Columbine High School shot and killed 12 of Erickson's classmates and a teacher who Erickson watched die right in front of her. And it was shocking to see him bleeding like that, to see my teacher that, you know, I'd loved like that. I, I didn't get it. Now, after what happened last week at Robb Elementary, Erickson is speaking out again, this time because of her beloved seven-year-old niece. I just kept picturing her possibly being one of those kids. Kids whose terrifying experience, Erickson says, parallels much of the horror she remembers from that day at Columbine. Like the students at Robb Elementary, Erickson and her classmates waited for police to rescue them too, hanging a sign on a window and calling 911. We put a shirt outside the handle of our door and we didn't know if the gunmen were alive or not. Uh, we didn't know anything that was happening and we were scared to death to do that, but we wanted the police to find us and to get us out. For Erickson to learn that last week, it reportedly took police an hour to rescue students trapped in a classroom with the gunman is infuriating. I was so furious that they hadn't learned from what happened to me and my classmates, and now these kids had to do it too. And it's beyond words. So too is the realization that the children who survived last week's shooting Hello. are changed forever. This is now there forever, and I, I am so sorry for that, and I don't want this to be there forever, and I don't want this to be anyone else's forever. That's why Erickson says lawmakers need to do something now. We have to come together and figure it out because there's an answer because this doesn't happen everywhere. It happens here, and it's happening all the time now. And every time it does, Erickson is reminded of what that day took from her and so many others. You were not the same young woman that walked out of that school that day as, as went in that morning, were you? It changed my everything. 